Hi, I'm David Gershaw, and I'm the Chief Innovation Officer here at Light Efficient Design in Remfoss. And in this video, what we'd like to show you is the installation steps of two of our great retrofit solutions for fluorescent fixtures. So over here, we have the LED bar kit external driver, and here we have the LED bar kit internal driver. The nickname for the external driver is the LBE, and the internal driver is the LBI. And in this video, we're gonna be showing you the generation LED bar kit external driver, LBE, but we do have a second generation product coming very soon, which has very similar installation steps. So both of these solutions are perfect retrofits for any fluorescent linear fixture, whether it be a vapor type, a wrap, a strip, or a troffer. These are both great solutions. They just have uh, somewhat different installation steps that we'll illustrate. For the purpose of this video, we're going to be showing retrofit inside of a 2x2 parabolic celled uh, troffer fixture. So you can see the troffer here. Um, in this case, this is a fixture with two U-Bend fluorescent lamps. Um, and the first step in retrofit would be to gut that existing fixture, to gut the fixture of the fluorescent ballast, the fluorescent bulbs. So I'm going to go ahead and start that process. The first step is obviously going to be to remove that cell lens. I'm going to set that aside. Next, we're going to remove the two U-Bend fluorescent lamps. These would be disposed of. Next, I'm going to remove the two clips that hold those fluorescent lamps in place because we're not going to use those. Then I'm going to remove the ballast cover. And we have access to that ballast cavity compartment. And I'm going to snip the wires to that fluorescent ballast and remove the fluorescent ballast and that would be disposed of as well. Okay, and there you have it. Now we have a completely gutted two by two fixture and we'll proceed by first starting with the LED bar kit external driver. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the stopwatch over here in this corner of the screen and um, I'll have it running during the whole installation so that we can compare, the, can compare the amount of time that it takes to retrofit with the LBE versus the LBI. So the first step here is we're going to install the two light bars. And in this case, obviously, we're using uh, two footers because we're going inside of a two by two. So I'm going to take the two light bars, and these have magnets on the back of them. And I'm going to set them in place where I want to put them. So we'll align them in place with the magnets. The magnets make it really easy to set them in place. Okay, good. Now I'm going to take a, uh, a drill with some self-drilling, self-tapping screws, and I'm going to lock these in place permanently. So now those two bars are locked in place. The next step is gonna to be to install the driver. So here's the external driver. This is one of the big differences, right, between the LBE and the LBI is this external driver. The LBI obviously doesn't have a driver. External, it's built into the unit itself.
Okay. Now we're going to make some connections between the light bars and the driver with the provided WAGO quick connectors. So we're going to connect our positives and negatives to the driver. Perfect. Now, since in this application, we're gonna be installing the optional motion sensor, I'll go ahead and do that. Here's the motion sensor we're gonna be using. Uh, this one runs off of line voltage, 120 to 277 volt AC. Then the, in the second generation, LBE launching very soon, uh, you'll be able to use one of our low voltage, 12 volt DC powered sensors. wiring between the driver, the sensor, and the incoming power. So we'll connect uh, a service disconnect to the motion sensor. We'll connect that to our incoming power feed. Then we'll connect our LED driver input to that motion sensor. Then we'll connect our zero to 10 volt dimming wires, the purple and grays from the driver to the sensor. Okay, so that's pretty much it from a mounting and wiring standpoint. Now I'm going to put that fixture back together. Making sure to hide all of our wiring and our connectors. And then this motion sensor antenna, because you don't want it to be behind the ballast cover, we'll just kind of tuck this up and stick it out behind the cover so that the antenna is sticking out. And if you wanted to, you could uh, use some double-sided sticky tape or screws to actually secure that sensor in. Now I'm gonna replace the parabolic cell. there you have it. So we're at about five minutes and 49 seconds to retrofit the LBE with a motion sensor inside of this 2x2. And now you can see I've turned the breaker back on and there you go. So there's a 2x2 retrofitted with the LBE. You can see how even with those two light bars it fills up that fixture really nicely. So 549 is our time to beat with the LBE. So now we're gonna go ahead and do the same retrofit in the same fixture with the LBI. So I'll reset our stopwatch and we'll begin. What we'll notice with the LBI compared to the LBE is because we don't have that external driver, the driver is built into the bar, um, because we have a motion sensor that's totally plug and play, no wiring, um, and you know we, have, we had four, five, six different wires going into the LBE sensor, whereas this is just completely plug and play. So that'll save us time. Um, and then the quick connectors that are gonna go between the light bars themselves, so they're gonna link them so we don't have to make connections, positive and negative, to the driver. So 
we're gonna see how long this takes to retrofit into the same fixture. So let's go ahead and reset our clock. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mount our two light bars. So just like the LBE, the LBI has magnets. So we'll get those aligned. And we'll secure those with self-tapping screws. One screw per bracket is plenty. Okay, perfect. Our bars are now secure. Next, we're gonna take our incoming power cable. We're gonna connect that to the first bar. I can just unclip the bar now, to make it a little bit easier to access. I'll plug that right into the end, plug and play. And I'll put that light bar back in place. I'm going to take my linking cable to connect my first bar to my second bar. See how nicely, nicely that linking cable tucks away. Then I'm going to take my motion sensor plug that into the end of the bar, and then I'll secure it. It uses the same magnetic bracket as on the light bars. Perfect. Then I'm just gonna connect my service disconnect here. Replace our ballast cover. Make sure to hide the wires. Now I'm just going to put my cell lens back in place. So there you go, three minutes and 11 seconds uh, compared to uh, almost five minutes with the LBE. So the LBI is clearly a faster installation. I also think it's quite a bit neater. Um, because of those linking cables, because of the white brackets, uh, it's just, it, it, it's faster, it's easier, it visually looks better. So now I'll go ahead and switch the breaker on. So I've switched the breaker on, as you can see, beautiful appearance, uh, this fixture looks great. So LBE versus LBI, both great retrofit solutions for any fluorescent fixture but the LBI is really the winner when it comes to speed and beauty cosmetically for retrofitting. Thank you so much. If you have any additional questions uh, that you'd like to ask us about this video that you saw today or how to retrofit these products into your particular fixtures, please contact any of our sales team um, or check us out on our website, led-llc.com for more product information. Thank you so much.